Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today welcome back to The Others. By popular demand, I am doing another episode in The Others series. Now, The Others is all about showcasing game engines that aren't basically the big three. So kind of a bit of the lesser known or the lesser used engines in a world that's dominated by the likes of Unity, Unreal, Godot, perhaps CryEngine, Lumberyard. It's nice to see a little bit of focus on engines that are a little bit less popular or a little bit less known. And today we are looking at Torque 3D. Now Torque 3D has been around for a very, very long time. And let me just go ahead and load it up while I talk about it. Now this is the Pacific demo you can download. So this is an idea of what you can do with Torque. Torque is very focused towards um, 3D style games, first and third person. Uh, this is uh, the Pacific demo. It's got fully destructible environments. It gives you a showcase of what Torque is capable of. Now, Torque started life in the early 2000s as the underlying engine behind the Tribes 2 game by uh, the company called Dynamics. And the, um, the source code was ultimately released by and used by a company called Garage Games. Now, Garage Games' uh, whole concept was basically to um, start the indie game dev movement before there was an indie game dev movement. They were actually quite uh, ahead of the curve that way. Them and Microsoft XNA pretty much kicked off the whole uh, developer tools affordable for the masses. And it used to be that you could buy... Gra um, the Torque game engine for, I think it was $99. And then a few years back, it was ultimately released as MIT open source on GitHub. So you can now use Torque um, completely free to do whatever the heck you like. And as you can see, it's capable of some pretty good results. Now this is very much um, focused towards multiplayer, uh, third person and uh, first person 3D games. Uh, you can tell kind of even by the, the editing experience. And speaking of which, so here we are in the Pacific demo. All of the demos are the exact same process. So what I can do now is hit the F11 key and boom, we're in the world editor. So there is an integrated world editor built directly within the game engine. And you can see it's still um, pretty much the same thing. I can actually run around in first person mode. So if I hit F8, I think, oh, maybe I need to leave it. So I need to go back to play mode. All right, here, I hit F8 to go back to first person mode, F7, so, okay, F7, first person mode, let's do F11 to go back into our world editor, and here you see, you're actually navigating the world just as you would um, playing it, so, but you've also got your set of editing tools available to you, so, why can I not move? Let's go back to, oh, I, I pissed something off, uh, one second. Go to editing mode, back to our editor. There we can navigate. So you see, I've got my selection cursor here. We've got a number of different modes we could work with in the editor. So if we want to change things in this world, uh, we've got different tools across the top here. So here you've got your general object selection or object editor mode. So this is where you could pick and select the game objects within your world. Uh, where is one? There we go. So this barrel here, for example, or this crate. It's there, I select it. And there you can see all of the various different objects and entities that go together and make up this world, and then there are properties of each object. Next up, we have our landscape editing tools. So we can do things like distort the world like that, or we can um, smooth the, the results I just did. So that's a little harsh. And, okay, which one here? That one, slope editor. Oops, I am now, ooh. Oops, just made an endless chasm. But anyways, you can see, you can change the, the tool temperature, the, sorry, the tool strength up here, uh, so you don't quite do as much destructive damage to the world as I just did. But as you just saw, there is a built-in landscape tool. Uh, here we've got the terrain painter, so you can paint different uh, terrain textures into the world. Here you've got, uh, which one's material editor, sketch tools, I'm not actually sure what they do. Uh, data editing uh, for basically different items in the world. You can set the properties using the data block properties uh, for, you know, here you can see things like dynamic fields for controlling the physics, which coincidentally there is full physics support. Uh, you got a deco editor, forest editor for planting trees in the world. Uh, there we go. Ooh, oh, I just crashed. Huh. Okay. Well, that's enough of uh, showcasing the insides of the editor anyways. And as you can see, on occasion, you can get some stability issues. 
Uh, not too common, to be honest. That was one of the first crashes I've actually experienced. But it's a good time to segue into a bit more information about the Torque Game Engine. Now, Torque Game Engine is ultimately uh, open source, like I mentioned. It's available at torque3d.org. Um, the actual source code itself is hosted on the Garage Games GitHub. It is under the MIT license. Now, the actual source code for the Torque Engine is C++ mostly. Uh, so if you dig into the engine source code like this, um, here we go. Here, core. Core sounds good. Uh, there you see. All classic C++ source code. Uh, it's pretty well supported and pretty well... Com mm, I thought it was pretty well... Com oh, yeah, it's commented. Uh, but the, the community is fairly active on this. So if we go see right here, there was a... A change just two days ago so the source code is definitely being updated there is an active community behind torque 3d um, now in terms of actually scripting torque I'll show you the uh, the Pacific demo I was just running so that was in my downloads folder Pacific demo and torque itself is written with a combination of C++ and then your client-side programming is done via uh, torque script which has the unfortunate extension of uh, .cs now this may actually predate the existence of C sharp, so um, that might be a legit mistake or uh, confusion there. So the CS, the CS scripts are not C sharp scripts; they're Torque scripts, and it's a C-like language. So you can see here how it works. So these are your um, uh, your function calls, your your variable names. Basically, it looks a lot like a cross between simple C and JavaScript. Um, it is documented. If you go back to their pages over here, um, you're getting started. We'll walk you through it. So there are tutorials to get you going. And then there's also a wiki. Uh, the wiki also, I believe, has direct script um, documentation as well. Uh, so if you want to get up and running with Torque 3D, it's, it's fairly simple. Now, of course, changing Torque is a bit more complicated. If you're coming in just as an artist, they've got it broken down. There's this artist section for how you can bring your data in. Uh, they had primarily used Collada as their input format or DAE, um, but you've got the workflow for an artist uh, documented right here. Whereas if you're a scripter that is creating the in-game content, it's broken down right here. And you can see this is the Torque script language reference um, like here. So you've got a pretty comprehensive set of documentation for how to get up and going. And then finally, if you are looking at actually changing the engine, you go into the coder section and you've got instructions there on, you know, basically how to get, how to, how to navigate through the source code, how to build the source code, what's required. Uh, it uses CMake as the build system, I believe it was. Uh, is this going to load? Here we go. So here is an overview of the general uh, architecture or layout. In the, of the game engine, it's broken into game blade rendering, uh, the virtual file system, uh, sim objects, and then your GUI on the front. GUI is something I didn't showcase before the crash, uh, but there is actually a, a full-blown GUI editor in there as well. So it's a pretty comprehensive game engine. There's quite a bit available there. Um, if you're not making a game in the genre that it's all about, I'm not sure there's a lot of use there for you. So for example, if you're trying to create a hidden object game or an adventure game. This is probably a bad fit for you. But it has been used to make some commercial games that really just aren't first person shooters. For example, one of the first uh, after Torque Game Engine was commercially launched was uh, Marble Blast Ultra for the Xbox 360. or Yeah, I think it was the 360. Uh, so obviously you can do non-shooter games using it, but the architecture is, uh, you know, expecting multiplayer potentially and... Um, it's orientated towards a shooter perspective, even uh, when you just first launch Torque. So go here. Here's the download for Torque. And if I just run Torque, so I just download it. This is the entry level to Torque. And then I say, okay, go ahead and create a new level. Let's give it a second. It's loading up the launcher. So I say, okay, uh, I could go say world editor or GUI editor. Here, I'll go GUI editor. I'm showing you that. But if I went up here and did play, I should have done play. I don't know if that clicked yet anyway. So here we are. So we're going to play. And then what you're choosing is basically empty room, train, or uh, the outpost demo. And I'll go with train. So we can start basically sculpting our own level. You're going to see it's shooter focus just on the level that, all right, here we go. You're in the world with a gun. And in fact, I can actually go through the number keys and pick different guns. Like the launcher. Uh, 
lines. So it is a shooter oriented setup and you're gonna have to pull this logic out by default. But uh, once again, I'm in here, I can hit F11, bring up the world editing tools and this is my blank canvas to start working on. And as I mentioned just a few seconds, <laughs> when will I ever learn? F10 is also the hot key for stop recording. So anyways, uh, you can hit the F10 key or you can hit right here and this will load up the uh, GUI editor. So you see here you can do your on-screen HUD editing. Uh, it's, it's a pretty simple concept, but basically you can build a UI. Um, you can test it at various different resolutions. So, so you can see how well your UI scales and how it's gonna display. And then once you've made a change, so for example, let's say I move that guy to the right of my gun, like here. And we go back to our level editor, here we go, and then we play it, and then you'll see my UI is updated in the bottom corner. So the, the UI editing and the uh, level editing is built directly into the game, but you can see you actually do get uh, a, a bit of a, a shooter-esque default template going on. So um, there's no reason why you can't remove that functionality, but that is kind of the lean of the engine. All right, so that is the Torque game engine, uh, completely open source, MIT licensed. If you're interested in this kind of thing, you're looking for a C++ based game engine and for some reason the other ones don't work for you, uh, definitely consider giving uh, Torque a shot. It's very, very easy to get up and running. Basically, you can just download the binary and go. Um, it's well documented, uh, it's actively developed. Uh, so if you're looking for an engine that is written in C++ and uses a proprietary language for its front end scripting, uh, Torque may be right for you. I kind of wish they didn't use Torque script, I'd rather they just went with something like Lua or uh, Python or something along those lines. I don't really like custom scripting engines all that much, but it also comes from an age where that was the norm. Um, and it's not that hard to learn. That's the entire idea behind scripting languages. Scripting languages are supposed to be easy to pick up. That's the point behind them. So, yeah, that's it's not my favorite aspect of the Torque engine, but Torque script is not hard to work with. All right, that is it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.